We're Sid and Mackie, and we're professional mountain bikers on a quest to find the best and most challenging mountain bike races around the world. So what goes into being prepared for these kind of races? Most importantly, a lot of training, but having the right gear is also important. And we're always asking questions and testing new equipment to see if we can find that edge. Today, we're going to be running our own little experiment, comparing Maxxis's new Max Speed compound to the same tires of the previous compound. We already know we like these tires for their improved wet weather traction, but do they really roll faster? And if so, by how much? So we have raced on the new Max Speed compound. All of Chile, all of Moab Rocks. They were amazing. We love these tires. I can't say objectively that they wore less quickly, but that's kind of what it seemed like. We finished five days of racing on these in Chile. As you guys saw, those trails were not easy. There were lots of rock, very sharp stuff. It was definitely tire destroying conditions. We finished and we both said, no, they look good. We'll race them at Moab. It was also extremely wet. There were slippery roots, there was mud, there was water, and we never felt like these were undergunned. Overall, we absolutely love this new compound. Love it. They also have said that because it has lower rolling, that it could theoretically save up to a minute in a 90 minute race. That's what we're gonna try to test today. We're gonna see if we can measure the difference in time rolling resistance between the max speed version and the original and just to clarify, throughout this video, we will be talking about the max speed and the non-max speed. Technically, the previous compound was also max speed. It was the 3C max speed. The new compound is a new version of max speed. Kind of confusing, but just know when we say max speed, we're talking about the new max speed. This is not a super scientific experiment, but we are gonna do what we can to control the variables that we can control. First thing we're gonna do is set these tires up onto identical sets of wheels. And then we are gonna go out and we're each gonna ride a loop on each set of tires. We're gonna try to be objective, but it may, like it's not a road. And we wanted to do it not on a road because they're we don't like race tires. on roads, <laughs> and these are not road tires. For the climb on each of these loops, we are gonna try to hit exactly the same power. We're also gonna time the descent, but you know, it's harder to say if that will be meaningful data. If you mess up one corner, that can affect the time. Totally. If you see a hiker. The more significant, in my opinion, is the climb because we know those were going the same intensity because we have power data. If your average power is 200 watts from point A to point B, it doesn't really matter if at one point you were doing 300 watts and another point you were doing 150. To try to be consistent, I am gonna weigh the wheels to try to get an idea of what they weigh. 1210. We realized that the scale we were using works really well for weighing bikes but it doesn't go down to more than, like it basically rounds everything to tens of grams. So we grabbed the kitchen scale. For good reason, apparently, because grams are very small. <laughs> yes, because grams are very small. But we're gonna use the kitchen scale. Will you write all of this down on that board yes, behind us? I will. So, <clears throat> Mackie's rear wheel, 1220. Max speed A, 804. So we're gonna do some kind of funny stuff. Like we're gonna actually measure our sealant. We don't usually do that, but we'll make sure we put the same amount of sealant in each tire. The max speed set has 3,593. So we are approximately 29 grams different. 26 grams in call good? Seems reasonable. All right, so whoever has the max speed set has to carry the rock. <laughs> Assuming we're carrying a water bottle, we drink some water. That shouldn't change the weight unless we pee. So we are not allowed to pee in between. Bye now. All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this first attempt because, well, we done screwed it up. Apparently we hadn't tightened the valve stem in the rear max speed tire and it was leaking quite a bit of air. Of course, we didn't realize this until Mackie's second lap came in a whole 50 seconds slower on the supposedly faster tires. By the time I got home riding those tires, it was basically flat. 
9.5 PSI. And all we learned was that flat tire equals slow. We regrouped, ate some giant quesadillas, and headed out to give it another go, this time armed with a floor pump and a pressure gauge. So trying again. <laughs> This time we are driving down there so that we have a pump and Allen keys and basically what we should have done earlier because then we could have corrected the air at the beginning instead of having to redo the whole thing. Um, it appears that the valve core was not put in all the way, which is why it was leaking. So this is my fault. So that's fun. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I said the valve core wasn't all the way in. That's all I said. Yeah, but you know who put the valve core in. Actually, I don't. It could have been me. I can't remember who put what in. I think I put them all in. Oh. Actually, that's not true. I think I put in three. So the question is, did I just forget to do the last one? It can be blameless. Yeah. It doesn't have to it be It happened. Blame. It happened. To us. Innocent victims. <laughs> it happened to us. <laughs> um, we are just bystanders in this whole situation. <laughs> I was five seconds off of getting a QOM, despite my cruisy downhill. So I think this time I might go shoot for going about six seconds faster on the descent each time. <laughs> Slightly faster. <laughs> okay, third time's the charm, as they say, since we had our little uh, second time attempt when I forgot my helmet and my gloves. So my endurance is 220 and up essentially so i think i'm gonna shoot for like 230 because <laughs> i feel no reason to overachieve all right and we'll see you in a bit The thing that's hard about power, especially average power, is it jumps around a ton, especially when you haven't been going for as long. So I've been going for 40 seconds and like any difference in power translates to like a huge difference in the average. So trying not to think too much about it and more just like settle into the intensity of 230-ish. Los Alamos trail traffic. Hi guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight deer. Eight minutes in, 231 average. That's good, that's right where I wanna be. Cause I know there are some downhill segments on this climb that will drop that average. it's hard to repeat lap to lap because it's hard to remember exactly what lines you took the previous time so I'm just kind of going with what seems the most obvious to me and hopefully that will continue to be true for the next lap <laughs> Our climbing time is gonna be 20 minutes or less. Maxis was saying potentially a minute on 90 minutes. That means with 20 minutes, we're looking at like 17 seconds. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see if we can actually measure that difference or not with this type of effort. Reasonably 
relatively close to the top. minutes average This part, right here. forgot to give Mackie the rock. Oh, good point. It would have ruined the entire experiment. <laughs> Again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is where we find out how hard it is to exactly match power. See you in a little bit. Yep. Lap. Oh, my legs feel poopy now. Nothing like going, not hard, but you know, riding pretty steady for 30 minutes and standing around changing wheels. Hi, doggy. Ooh, that'll add a second or two. Hi there. Where are you going? Look out. That is a dog that likes to run. Close to the end of this climb, I've got to drop a few watts though. <laughs> so this is gonna be even. So this is such a funny challenge trying to go slower. Okay. I think I think I'm still a little high. I want it to drop to 183 before this last push, because that'll push me up one. Come on. Oh man, it is going to be very close on the time. Come on. There it is. 183. Okay. All right. 47. 
very slightly, like 12 seconds different maybe. All right, I did get the power the same that time, so. I don't remember which one was faster, so. Not markedly different. How's it going, guys? Mind if I sneak by? Just you? Just me. Thanks very much. Enjoy your hike. Yeah, thanks. did we learn? Well, once we finally controlled for tire pressure, we were both slightly faster on the max speed compound tires. I was about 13 seconds faster, which is 1.1%, fairly close to what Maxis said. I ran into traffic on the way down on both runs, so I kind of just had to throw those out because there was no good way to compare the two. For whatever reason, I saw slightly less improvement than Mackie. I went about six seconds faster over 15 minutes, which is about half a percent improvement. I was also faster on my max speed descent, and for what it's worth, I did get the QOM. Knuckles. <laughs> Celebrate. But I wasn't able to keep the wattage exactly the same for those two descents. I would say one of our big takeaways from this is that we definitely understand why Companies in the bike industry use things like wind tunnels or those rolling resistance machines to make direct comparisons between two things because it's very hard to do a real world experiment. We were both slightly slower on both of our afternoon climbs than we were on our morning climb with inflated tires. Maybe that is the weight of the quesadilla. Maybe <laughs> there was a headwind in the afternoon that was just barely perceptible. Uh, we Maybe don't know dirt dried out more like totally, really there yeah. are so many variables that go into it my biggest takeaway is that the difference in compound probably does make a difference mm -hmm. it's going to be really hard to tease that out in a real world situation and there are other things that make a much bigger difference like tire pressure as we learned but all the other things that this compound delivers the improved uh, durability that we saw anecdotally the improved wet traction that we saw very much <laughs> in real life, those two things alone make this new compound definitely my go-to choice. If you're choosing tires, I would go for like the compound that you like the traction of, you like the durability, and you know, it's a bonus if it rolls faster. And we clearly need to do a test to see what our optimal tire pressure is because <laughs> it's not nine and a half PSI. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so. Help us get to 100K. And this we'll... is the year, guys. We've been doing this for a long year. time. And I think it's finally the year to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So please. Please. <laughs> we will be back next week with very much not a mountain bike tire custom video. It's not gonna be mountain fun. bike tires at all. Ooh. It's going to be very Ooh. different. So stay tuned. We'll see you then. And in the meantime, don't forget to be more awesome.